Hi, I'm Jen Stevens, and I'm here on behalf of the Healthy Minds team to talk to you about the anxiety and worry that some of you may feel when returning to school. With all the ongoing worry and anxiety around coronavirus, it isn't surprising that many people are experiencing some anxiety at the minute. There are a lot of question marks surrounding many aspects of our lives which we usually take for granted. For example, what will school be like when I go back? How long will all of these protective measures have to continue? And will scientists ever develop an effective vaccine? It's been a difficult period for everyone to navigate their way through, made worse by the fact that we simply don't know all of the answers to the many questions we have. This, however, can be turned on its head and used to our advantage. By simply acknowledging that we don't have all of the answers at present, or that the answers we do have are subject to change all of the time, we can begin to remind ourselves that this is something which is out of our immediate control. You can follow the guidance being given around social distancing, and yes, you can wear a face mask, but actually there's a lot left which we don't have control over. And whilst that might sound a bit negative at first, it's actually the perfect opportunity to ask yourself questions like, how helpful is it to continue to worry about this? Chances are, most of you will agree with me that the answer to this would be not very, and that's fine. There are many situations in our lives which we must deal with where we're not in full control. And one way of handling this is to accept that this is okay and to give some thought as to how we are able to keep moving on despite this. Life goes on and we need to find ways to adapt. One way that we teach people to handle these worries about what might happen, which we refer to as hypothetical worries or what ifs, is to consider where they are within your circle of control. So picture a circle and imagine writing down all of your worries and think about where they would go. Things that we can control go inside the circle and the things that we have little to no control over go outside of the circle. Needlessly worrying about the things which may or may not happen, such as what if I get poorly, only serves to get the worry going. This worry fits outside of the circle. If you're following the advice around social distancing and wearing masks, then there's nothing else you can do about this worry. And so the best thing to do is to accept it, let it go and move on. This is, of course, easier to do with some worries than others. Consider a situation where a small sapling has just been planted in the local park. This sapling symbolises any worries you may have. Every time you go to the park, you pass the tree and it makes you think about it. But since it's a sapling, it hasn't yet developed strong roots under the ground and would therefore be easy to simply pull out and dispose of. This is the same with our worries. While they're relatively new, it's easier to manage them with techniques like grounding and mindfulness, which we'll discuss later. Now, Consider that same sapling, only this time we don't pull it straight up when we notice it, but we allow it to grow. And every time we see it, we think about how it's looking bigger than last time. Its roots are beginning to grow too. And although we can't see them, these roots are becoming more entangled with each other and maybe with those of nearby trees and therefore stronger and more entrenched in its surroundings. Trying to pull a tree out of the ground at this point would be a near impossible task without specialist equipment. Again, this is the same with our worries. The more attention we give them, the more we think and worry about them, the more they grow and the stronger they become. They become entangled with other worries and fears until they've become firmly rooted and difficult to deal with without more specialist tools, the type which would have to be given to you by a qualified counsellor or CBT therapist. At this minute, many of the worries and fears that people are experiencing are still at the sapling stage, which is good news as it's still within our reach to do something about them. One thing to remember at this stage is that it's normal and expected to have some worries about things that might never have concerned you before, like going back to school after the summer holidays, and you won't be alone in this. It might be reassuring to remember that as life gradually begins to return closer to normality, what we've always been used to, we should find that many of these worries naturally lessen and become less of a challenge. Each element of normal life that returns is like the gardener pruning an extra branch from that sapling, like being able to return to clubs and hobbies, or just even being able to spend time with people from outside our own families. And most importantly, being able to get back into helpful routines again. A significant chunk of your life so far has been spent in education, arguably one of the most routine driven experiences of all. And whether you care to admit it or not, 
It's likely that this consistency has been helpful and reassuring for you in many ways and becoming embedded into this again will no doubt play a key role in helping to cut back the sapling and manage your worries. And what we're talking about here is a process called watchful waiting, which is a medical term to describe the process of allowing things time to play out before intervening. And this isn't the same as doing nothing, since the emphasis is on paying attention to what is happening during the period of waiting, since as already mentioned, it would be expected that many people's worries will begin to lessen and improve with time. And there are lots of things you can do during this period of watchful waiting, which you might find useful. Mindfulness is one such tool that you can use. Mindfulness or being mindful is simply taking time out from what you're doing and what you're thinking about and giving your full attention to something else. It's about slowing down and enjoying the moment for what it is. It could be anything, but usually involves using all or some of our senses. So for example, spending a minute or two thinking about a hot drink, instead of gulping it down without a second thought like we often do, Try to use your senses and focus on what you notice about it. Begin with how it smells. What do you notice? Think about the temperature. Is it too hot or just right? Is it sweet? Is it bitter? Chocolatey? Malty? And as you take a drink, notice the warmth as you swallow and it makes its way down your throat and into your stomach. Can you see the steam coming off the surface? Is the drink still swirling around in your cup from when you stirred it? You can use mindfulness with almost anything. It requires no specialist equipment, just a minute or two of your time and can be done anywhere, although somewhere quiet and distraction free will work best. Breathing exercises can also be helpful when you're feeling anxious or worried. One of the things that we often notice when we feel anxious is that we tend to breathe faster than usual. Being able to slow our breathing down can give us a feeling of calm and reduce any further anxiety. And this is particularly true and helpful if this anxiety begins to turn into panic. Again, these exercises require nothing special to carry them out other than your time and attention and can be performed anywhere. Some people find it helpful to focus their attention on something like a door frame or a window and do something we call square breathing. Start at one corner and use your eyes or a finger if you wish to visually trace the outline of the frame. Do this slowly Breathing in through your nose for a count of four as you trace up one side, then out through your mouth for four as you follow along the next side of the square. Repeat as you continue around the sides, remembering to breathe slowly and in a controlled manner. One other method is to imagine that you have a nice hot drink in your hands, such as a cup of hot chocolate. Breathe in through your nose as you smell the sweetness of the drink, again for a count of four. Then once again for four seconds, breathe out through your mouth as you pretend to carefully blow on the surface of the drink to cool it down. By using some of these techniques and remembering that it's normal to feel a bit anxious at the minute, you should find that your anxiety begins to lessen over your first few weeks of school as you begin to settle back into a new routine. For many people, the idea of watchful waiting, which I mentioned earlier on, should be enough to help, combined with some of the ideas I've given you earlier. Some people, however, may find that their worries remain even after several weeks of returning to school and getting back into routine. If you're one of these people, remember that there are professionals who are able to offer extra support about your worries and your school has direct links with the Healthy Minds team and may even have one of their team working within your school at the minute. All schools should have a member of staff whose job it is to know about this. Speak to them if you have any concerns or if you don't know who this person is in your school ask another teacher and they'll be able to find out for you. They can discuss things further with you and make a referral for a Healthy Minds worker to meet you if needed.